Good morning. It's great to be with you again from Resurrection Anglican Church in downtown Woodstock, Georgia. My name is Gene Prince, and I am the rector of Resurrection. Let's join together and pray the collect of the day. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This has been a sad week in our state. A 25-year-old man by the name of Ahmad Arbery, a black man, was murdered while out for a run not far from his home. Hopefully, there will now be justice. And may I offer you a fresh challenge as I ask my own heart to reflect on this. Ask God to bring repentance in our hearts for whatever racism lives there. The coronavirus continues to wreak havoc in our country. We need Jesus Christ now more than ever. I want us to look this morning at the life of Stephen in Acts chapter 6 and chapter 7. As I thought about Stephen this week, I was challenged in my heart. The challenge was this. What do you hold in your heart that you would be willing to give your life for? Jim Elliott said, No man is a fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Stephen, I believe, was the first man in Scripture to live out that truth. It might serve you right now to pause the video and take time to read Acts 6 and 7. As we look at Stephen's life, in the end, Stephen died for the cause of Christ. Stephen decided in his heart that giving his life for the cause of Christ was worth it. The end of chapter 7 and verse 59, and we read these words. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. How did Stephen get here? How do people come to the place in their lives where they can do what these people did to Stephen? What do we know about Stephen? To know how Stephen came to this place is to know Stephen. And to know Stephen, we have to back up a chapter and see what Scripture says about him. Back at the beginning of Acts chapter 6 and the 5th verse, we read these words, and, they, and what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Stephen was called to be a deacon. 
to serve the Lord in that particular office. And it says in verse 5 that they chose him because he was a man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Stephen believed God to be true. He knew in his heart that living his life and giving his life for the sake of Christ was truth. He wrestled with things the same way that we do. But in the end, it was his faith in God that sustained him. And it will sustain us as well. He was full of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended, he told his disciples that he was going away, but that he would send another in his place. He would send the Holy Spirit to be their counselor and their comforter. Stephen knew the counsel and the comfort of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit, as we know, is the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He is God, and He is here to be our counselor and our comforter. Acts 6, verse 8, And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great signs and wonders among the people. Scripture says he was full of grace. Grace is what God gives us to face life when it seems we can face it no longer. Grace is the kindness of God not to leave us alone. Grace is God giving himself to us. Stephen was full of grace. He knew the kind hand of God. Grace is where God meets us. Grace is God's answers to our questions. Grace is God's provision for our needs. Grace is God's strength in our weakness. Grace is God's moment by moment presence. It says that Stephen was full of power and was doing great wonders and signs. Because Stephen was full of grace and full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit, he lived his life in display of the power of God. Again, Stephen's life said to those around him, God is real. Folks, with all that's going on in our world, I want you to know this morning that God is real. You see, religious leaders were threatened by Stephen, and they falsely accused him. They brought him before the council, and this is what they said about him in verse 15. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. There was something about Stephen's appearance that spoke of the presence and the power and the active working of God in his life. He had a holy confidence. In these verses, we see the fabric of the man. It is in the fabric of the man that helps us to understand how he faced being stoned to death. In Acts chapter 7, beginning in verse 55, 
we see that Stephen knew Jesus. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of God, the Son of Man, standing at the right hand of God. There was in Stephen's life this oneness with the Father. Stephen's life was a good representation of what a life with God should look like for all of us. In Stephen's life, God was never far off. He was close by. Do you ever think that God is too busy for you? What we see in Stephen is that God is never too busy. At the moment of Stephen's death, God is with him just as he had been with him throughout his life. And it enables Stephen to face death boldly. In verse 57, But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. The world doesn't know what to do with a man or a woman given totally to the cause of Christ. The death of Stephen was the seed of the gospel. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. In Acts 22, the same Saul says, When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. Stephen's death was the seed of a gospel. It was the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And who became the Apostle Paul, observed from a distance. And says he even held the garments of those who stoned Stephen to death. How did Stephen face death this way? Stephen knew that death was not the ending, but only the beginning. In verse 59, and as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. When Paul wrote these words in Philippians 1, I think he remembered Stephen. Romans 1, verse 20. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death, 
For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two, Paul writes. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Jesus said in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. I'm reminded of the song from several years ago by Nicole Mullins. She sings, Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who taught the ocean you can only come this far. And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? The very same God that spins things in orbit, runs to the weary, the worn, and the weak, and the same gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken. They conquer death to bring me victory. He lives to take away my shame. He lives forever, I'll proclaim, that the payment for my sin was the precious life he gave. But now he's alive, and there's an empty grave. And I know my Redeemer. He lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify. Let this life within me cry. I know my Redeemer. I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. See, that one who redeems our lives is the one who one day will redeem the world. This world that seems to be spinning out of control is firmly in the grasp of God. The one who redeems Stephen and Paul can redeem us as well. The one who fills Stephen with faith and with grace and with the Holy Spirit wants to fill you this morning. Our Redeemer lives. Receive Him today. Do you love Him enough this morning to lay it all at His feet? May that be the pursuit of all of our lives. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of the Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. I pray that this day and this week you will know the presence of the living God through his Son, Jesus Christ. May he be with you every step of the way. Amen. Until next time. We'll see you soon.